Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. We are looking at games releasing from the 4th of September up until the 10th, plus as always we'll have a look at a couple of games first that released without any warning or just missed one of these videos in previous weeks for whatever reason. So what games are coming out this week? Well, let's find out. Beginning with the games already out then and the first is Super Animal Royale. This is a free to play 64 player online battle royale played from a top down perspective with anthropomorphic animals using a variety of powerful weapons. There is a 2D world to explore as you scavenge for weapons and armour, animal breeds to collect and what the blurb calls evolving events. As I said it is free to download and has been out for about a week now so if you have played it perhaps you can let everyone know if it's worth the download. Also already out then is Stranded Deep, which is an open world survival game set on an island somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. You play as a plane crash survivor and must build, craft, survive and perhaps ultimately escape. You'll be exploring underwater and on land, hunting for supplies to craft tools, weapons and a shelter. You'll be battling with hunger, thirst and the elements as well as anything else that may be lurking on the island. We do have a video up of this game if you do want some more information, I'll put a link to it in the top pinned comment. It's selling for £22.99 or your regional equivalent. And finally for the games already out is Thea 2. This is a blend of 4x strategy, RPG and card game. Now I played the first Thea game on the Switch and enjoyed it and this sequel has been out on Steam for a few years and has good scores over there. It's based on Slavic mythology and you control the fate of a small flock of believers struggling for survival and can achieve this in a number of ways including diplomacy or war. It supports online play for up to 3 players and sells for £17.99. The first of this week's games then is Sonic Colors Ultimate. This also featured in last week's video as there was a digital deluxe version which released a few days earlier so I won't spend too long on it again but the standard version will be out on the 7th of September. Sonic Colors first released back in 2010 for both the Wii and the DS and introduced the Wisp characters which doubled up as power-ups for Sonic. The ultimate Monica refers to the upscaled visuals and the new game modes that have been added for this version and it will sell for £34.99. Out on the 8th then, not a game, but The Outer Worlds is getting its final narrative expansion pack. It's called Murder on Eridanos and has been out on other consoles for a while, and sees you venture into the skies of Eridanos as you try to unravel the grandest murder mystery in the Halcyon colony. It says suspicions abound and it's up to you to get to the bottom of the murder of Halcyon Helen, the most well-known celebrity in the colony. There are new weapons and character customization, three new science weapons which can be added to the player's arsenal, and you can also increase your level cap by three and employ new perks and flaws. It's selling for £11.99 or your regional equivalent. Also this week you have Blood Rain Betrayal Fresh Bites. This is an upgraded version of a game that released for the PS3 and the Xbox 360 I believe back in 2011. As far as I know, this was the third game in the Blood Rain series. I never played this particular one, I think it was a download title, but I do remember the first game which came out around 2002, and there has also been a Blood Rain movie, although that was directed by the bloke that made the House of the Dead movie, which was universally panned. Anyway, this particular game in the series is a 2D hack and slash platformer set across 15 stages. This Fresh Bites edition has a new voice acting cast, sharpened visuals and a new optional rebalanced difficulty setting. It's going to sell for £17.99 and it releases on the 9th. Blood Rain Betrayal coming. Then you have Escaluda 2, which is the latest of the cave shooter maps to make its way to the Switch. This is a bullet hell shooter that first released in arcades in 2005, and it looks as if it also released on the Xbox 360 in 2010, albeit only in Japan as far as I could see. There are three characters to choose between, each with their own characteristics, a novice mode included to go along with the arcade mode, and a black label mode, which I believe is that Xbox 360 version I mentioned just now, and that has an extra playable character. It's going to sell for £15.29 and is out on the 9th. 
A blast from the past with the next game, this is Boulder Dash Deluxe. Boulder Dash is an absolute classic, having first released in 1984 and actually received an arcade release owing to its success on home computers rather than the other way round. I think it may have been the first game actually to achieve such a feat. It was created by two people and sees you play as Rockford as you attempt to collect treasures while avoiding hazards in cave based levels. I remember playing this back on the Commodore 64, this along with other games such as Manic Miner, APB, Midnight Resistance, Sly Spy, Barbarian, IK Plus, so many good games, I love the Commodore 64, really good times. This actually includes the original game and the deluxe version with hundreds of new levels, including some that were made by one of the original creators. There's a lot that sounds great here, but I absolutely hate the look of the new version. It just looks incredibly cheap in my opinion. It's the inclusion of that original and the 20 levels by Peter Leeper that would draw me towards it, more so than the new version. Also out this week then is a game called Residual, which is a survival platformer. A lone explorer crash lands on a planet with an ancient alien secret. You'll be traversing harsh and procedurally generated worlds looking to harvest food and making campfires to stay alive, all the while crafting tools, weapons and high-tech equipment such as teleporters. The blurb says that the developers, Orange Pixel, use a nature engine which picks from thousands of different plants plus environment-based issues such as intense heat, stamina reducing cold and high winds when making its levels. It has a terraria look to it in terms of the visuals as far as I can see and I really do love the deep and rich use of colour used in the environment. It's going to cost £17.99 or your regional equivalent. And then we have Ultra Age, which is an action game set in the far future as you embark on a mission to save humankind from extinction. After a meteor changes the Earth's ecosystem, humankind has been divided into those that fled the Earth and those that stayed behind and remained in a facility called the Shelter. After contact is lost with those on Earth, a warrior named Age is sent to investigate. You'll be slashing through enemies with a variety of blades, gathering elements to enhance those blades and installing modules and power gear to level up. Having just watched the trailer, it looks like a mix of the world from Xenoblade Chronicles in some respects, but with the action of a Ninja Gaiden game. I can only hope it's anywhere near the hybrid game I've just invented in my head, but it does have a demo available so we can all have a look for ourselves. It's going to sell for £26.99, but there is 20% off that price up until launch. Next is Rico London, which is a first person co-op shooter. I own the first Rico game for the Switch, and whilst I don't think it scored particularly well when it came out, I must say I did have a lot of fun with it. You basically went from floor to floor clearing out enemies and playing locally having to try and revive each other. It had that sort of co-op but also competitive style that in my opinion always gives multiplayer games a bit of an edge. I remember Mark and myself playing through it one night for a good few hours and having a really good time with it. This new version is set in 1999 in London, as the title would suggest, and sees you battling your way through a high-rise tower block in the east end of the capital. Very similar premise to the first game then, and you pick up perks and upgrades, and there is also online play as well as local. If they ever make a third game in this series, they should base it around the Judge Dredd film that came out back in 2012, the one with Cole Urban playing as the starring role. That was set in a tower block I seem to remember and was a really good film, although I think it tanked at the time unfortunately. Anyway, tangent over. This game comes out on the 9th and will sell for £24.99. Somehow it falls to me to bring down the whole lot of them in the only way I know how. Kicking doors and shooting bad guys. And finally for the week then we have a game from Nintendo themselves in WarioWare Get It Together. The latest game in the WarioWare series which I just read is now at its 10th instalment which is pretty incredible really. This one includes over 200 micro games which require lightning fast reflexes and can be played in solo mode or with friends either locally or online. 
The minigames themselves look just as manic and crazy as ever, and each of the in-game characters controls differently in terms of the actions they can perform, meaning there may be more than one solution in terms of how you can solve one of the games. There is a demo on the eShop if you want to try this one out first, and it releases on the 10th of September for £39.99 or your regional equivalent. And one button. They will keep coming and coming and coming. <laughs> All right. As a super duper special treat for you, I'll tell you about my crew. Ashley. So there you have it once again, a week of Nintendo Switch releases. Not a bad week all told, you got a first party Nintendo game in there, a Sonic game, the Outer Worlds DLC for those that want more content for that game, Blood Rain of course and a good few others. Please do let me know if you are picking any of these games up, which one interests you in particular, stick it all in the comment section below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care and until next time, happy gaming.